Legends of the Dugout. Earl was so much fun. He was Nobody was more serious of the game of baseball than Earl Weaver. And I think he kept the tobacco companies in business all those years, <laughs> puffing on those cigarettes in a dugout. You could always see the smoke flying out of there. But another great guy. Fierce competitor, but a good guy. Earl's a good guy. And uh, when I first took over the Royals, they were an expansion team, and we never won in Baltimore, and I had to convince our players we could. And, and Earl's team was dominant in the early 70s. Finally got over that hump, but man, he had 420 game winners, six Golden Glove guys, and uh, you know, he had some great teams. There. But take somebody to run the ship, and he could run the ship. And uh, he was a great manager, very deserving to be a first time in the Hall of Fame. He was known as the Earl of Baltimore, beloved amongst his fans. Yet due to his love of the game, he was nothing short of a nightmare to umpires and opposing teams. He led his Oriole teams for nearly 17 seasons, winning four pennants and a World Series championship. This St. Louis native was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1996. Earl Weaver will forever be remembered as one of the greatest managers of all time, as he is inducted into his hometown's Sports Hall of Fame. I gotta tell a story about Earl Weaver, though. All the years I managed against him, you know, he had one year, he had 420 game winners, he had uh, Bumbry and Blair, one and two, he had two switch hitters, Singleton and Murray, both of them would hit 25, 30 home runs, hitting three and four. He had a gold glove infield and Boog Polly there, Belanger and Brooks Robinson. He had two gold glove outfielders in Blair and Robinson. And the game would start, and every time I talked to the umpires, whether I'd see them in a restaurant or talked to them before, they all told me how they hated Earl Weaver, because he on every pitch. <laughs> so he would, he'd come down to the dugout, we turned in the lineup cards, and Earl, I gave him the nickname Mickey Rooney. I mean, that's because <laughs> I thought he looked a lot like Mickey Rooney. And finally, <laughs> when he'd come down every night, the same thing. I'm managing Royals, and he's, he's puffing on the cigarettes, and he's just every pitch he's hollering at the umpire. The only good thing was, for three innings, he'd go strong, and then he'd lose his voice, and then he couldn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they. The St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame has one of his old uh, authentic Oriole uniforms. And so you've got the, the bird insignia. But it has on the inside, like a sport coat has a pocket here. On the inside, stitched in, was a little pocket for his cigarettes. Because mm -hmm. then I guess it was more accepted. And he'd be puffing away right. in the dugout. And there's so many stories about him, but one that, that I love He's in the middle of a tirade, and the Orioles are in the midst of a losing streak, and he's traipsing up and down the dugout, and the language is getting bluer with every step. And his players were actually afraid of him. They might have talked about him behind his back, but they wouldn't challenge him. And they had a reserve outfielder who was a devout Christian named Pat Kelly. And Kelly was at one end of the dugout, and as Earl came back for about the fifth time starts toward him, Kelly stands up, and they're about to meet in the middle of the dugout. And as they do, Kelly says, Earl, I'd like to see you walk with the Lord. And the players are looking at each other, and Earl thinks for a second, and he says, Pat, I'd rather see you walk with the bases loaded. <laughs> Tommy, why, in 1985, did you let Needenfjord pitch to Jack Clark? Swing and a long one in the left field. Adios, goodbye, and maybe that's a winner. Okay, let me explain it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was on deck? Uh, 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 Andy Van Slyke. That's a boy. <laughs> He's, was he a left-hand or right-hand hitter? Left-handed hitter. Okay. The time before that, I walked the second baseman to pitch to Clark, who struck him out, needing fewer, struck him out on three pitches. True. So you sick that guess? You can do it all the time. The second guesser is somebody who don't know anything about the first guess, and the second guesser is somebody who needs two guesses to get one right. You got it right. <laughs> now, if, 
if he had if he had walked Clark and then Van Slyke comes up, he probably brings in uh, Jerry Royce, right? I, I hate to say this, but I think you're wrong. I had made a, I had made a double switch and a pitcher was hitting after Clark and I had Harper and Jorgensen left on the bench. And Van Slyke was out of the ball game. But you know, if you really want to be honest, you look at two guys here that have been Hall of Fame managers and very successful. How many pennants or world championships would Tommy have won if Steve, Steve Howe hadn't had that problem? Yeah. Uh, he was such a dominant young relief pitcher at 21 years old. How many would Bobby have won? I mean, he won 14 straight uh, division titles and only won one World Series. And, uh, he lost four of Minneapolis like I did. Right. You know, hell, we could have played there until Easter and never won a game. But the thing <laughs> is, the big thing there is how many world championships would he have won if Bruce Sutter hadn't got hurt? Mm -hmm. So you can look, need and fewer. I look, I look at both sides. I've thanked Tommy and he and I are good buddies 10 times, 20 times for pitching to Jack Clark. <laughs> and, and we kind of make a joke of it, you know, he says, shut up. But the big thing is, then I start thinking <laughs> that really, now, uh, first base was empty, the winning run was on second base, and the tying run on third. He's got a young pitcher out there that, you know, if, you don't, if he's got first base open, he don't really have to groove a pitch, and he's going to make a mistake and so forth. And he might, Jack could be pitched to. Tell me the count, was, yeah. what was the but count when he hit it? Yeah. First well, pitch. Huh? First pitch. No, right? I don't think so. I think it was uh, first pitch. I think it was had two strikes on him. I, th I think it was one and two. Was it? Mm -hmm. I think it was the first pitch. Well, anyway. I think it was 0 and 2. You might be, you might be right, because I remember Pedro throwing his glove up in the air. When, yeah. Yeah. But some, for, for some funny reason, I got into the Hall of Fame. Ha, 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 ha.